I hope this inspires you guys to see the gemstones all around you, whether you're a gamer, you like movies, all yeah. sorts of gemstone applications all around you. The origins of glintstone are actually not explicitly explained. I put together this compendium of the gemstones, the rocks mm. that you can find in Elden Ring. So if you are a gamer or if you're even very casual about it, you've probably heard about Elden Ring. Elden Ring has been blowing up since its release. It sold a ton of copies. But if you're like Rebecca, your only experience of Elden Ring is hearing me and my coworkers talk about it ad nauseum. But I brought Rebecca in here today to sort of bring me back down to earth. There are many different sources of magic in the game and one of them is Glintstone. So the company that develops Elden Ring is called FromSoft, and they've developed a lot of games, and one of the common threads throughout their games, aside from being devilishly difficult, is to unpack all of the story that permeates the game, you sort of have to do your own research, which a lot of people really appreciate and enjoy. With that being said, I sort of did a lot of my own research, and I have sort of put together this compendium of the stones, the gemstones, the rocks that you can find in Elden Ring, or at least what I've found in my playthrough. The list that I've come up with is just basically based on appearance. You know, I see a stone in the game, maybe it's uh, part of their weapons or something, or maybe it's glintstone, but I'm basically looking at it and I'm finding a counterpart in real life. I kind of love this. Arise, <laughs> tarnished. I take that back. Box of the Halig tree. You notice the end of Halig tree is tree. It, it literally is a tree. Trees are a kind of motif that reoccurs throughout the game. And in fact, as soon as you step into the main overworld of the game, one of the first things you notice is this colossal towering golden glowing tree called the Erd tree. And it's one of the early points of mystery in the game. The knights of the Halig tree would wear armor made with unalloyed gold, and they also had their weapons adorned with, what is in this box? Oh. Hey! Holy! I always forget how light it is. Oh my gosh, it's like plastic. Yeah, so amber is fossilized tree resin, so essentially the sap from trees, and you can have different bugs or plant matter get trapped in there, anyone who's seen Jurassic Park. Yeah, um, yeah. One way that you can identify amber is through these bugs. That's one of my favorite things about amber is just the variety of things that you can find on the inside. I mean, I've seen amber with scorpions on the inside mm -hmm. of it. It's one thing to see a gemstone and know that it's, you know, millions of years old. It's another to see a glob of amber with bugs that were crawling around or flying around or slithering around millions of years ago and they are just immaculately preserved. I mean, you can preserve feathers in amber, tiny little reptiles with feathered tails and amber is too cool. This is copal. Yes, copal is a lot like amber in most aspects, except copal is a little bit younger and is still sort of maturing. <laughs> Again, there's not really a hard line distinguishing amber from copal, but no. typically copal is going to be anything younger than 10 million years old, which is, you know, just a baby. Just juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> amber tends to be tens of millions of years old, mm -hmm. like 30 to 50. I mean, way, way, way back. And amber and copal can be anything from like light whitish yellowish to, to pretty dark brown dark brown orange a deep red the reds are really pretty so you've got a few options there and something that they call blue, blue amber from certain angles it doesn't really look all that blue but if you rotate it in the right direction you'll pop a blue out of that sucker mm -hmm. here's the thing yes. if you're adorning armor with amber that's a good call for one reason, and it's maybe not a good call for another reason. Tell me why. So Amber has a really low specific gravity, so it's very light. It's not gonna weigh you down in battle. That's good, yeah. So that's great. Amber's also really soft, though. So mm -hmm. if somebody jabs you with the pointy end, you're, you're not really It's a weak spot, shape. they're getting through? Yeah. Dang. Talk to me about this ring, because there's not Amber in that. That's Mother of Pearl. There's a type of item in the game called a talisman, which you can have your character wear and it will give you a certain power up. And there's one 
made of cerulean amber, which is why I included the blue uh, amber. And there is one, it takes the shape of a dragon. And it's called the Pearl Drake Talisman. It looks obviously to me like Mother of Pearl, and so I just kind of made a mental note of it. Dragons get used a lot as symbols of protection and stuff in this game, and so the Pearl Drake Talisman, in the description of it, talks about how in the time before the big golden Erd tree, dragons were used to protect the lords and stuff, and then with the Halic tree also had knights to protect it. So I, I just wanted to include this guy, the Mother of Pearl ring. You know, I like a little bit of variety. Yeah, you know? love it. The Astrologer's Box. Uh, okay, so there are a bunch of classes. You can pick one at the start of the game. The Astrologer class in the game is described as a scholar who reads the fate in the stars. You know, like when Mercury's in retrograde or whatever. I'm familiar with it. Um, <laughs> there are lots of characters and items in the game that are theorized to be like celestial bodies having come from the stars. Okay, we got Benitoite. This is Rhodochrosite. Mm hmm. It's held by the salmon y color. Yeah. It's a Rubelite. I had to include a little bit of Rubelite. Someone was taking an SG, so that's fun. Yeah. And then yeah. Afghanite. This okay. is kind of my take on what glintstone might be. It's varying shades of blue throughout the game, but there's also a red variety of glintstone. Afghanite gets its name from the primary locality where it comes from, Afghanistan. And it's got a really crazy, insane, saturated shade of blue that's just, just, just not opaque. I'm really curious about the color of blue of glintstone as it relates, because some more transparent varieties will be a little bit more neon, but that is just such a pretty vibrant blue It, it is a rich, royal kind of shade of blue. The glintstone that you start out with is a little bit lighter, a little bit wider and shinier. This actually sort of looks more like the color of spells from the Carrion School of Sorcery. That's a family in the game of sorcerers. We ain't gotta go there. So, Afghanite was first discovered in Afghanistan, actually in a lapis mine. Afghanistan is where most of the a lapis the lazuli fire. comes from in the entire world. The pyrite makes for really pretty specimens. Yeah, though. that's for sure. Yeah, the there's pyrite, nice the glittering. White and then the vibrant blue. That's really pretty. Let's go to the Benitoite. I really like Benitoite. It's a different blue from Afghanite. Totally. Afghanite maybe is like, you leans mean? towards Jolly Rancher, yeah. you know? That's how I describe colors anyways. Oh, the anyways. blue raspberry? As, absolutely. Yeah, the best one. And Benitoite is a little bit more navy. Yes. It's like more formal or something. It's like dressed up. For sure. No, I, to <laughs> I totally sure. get that. Do you know what I mean? I'm no, using like that. ridiculous abstract language, but so Benitoite is actually the state gemstone of California. And the main locale of the highest quality Benitoite and gem quality Benitoite is San Benito County in California. And that's the only place you can really find it. And one of my favorite parts about Benitoite are the crystal forms. Like yeah. you have what look like, sometimes they're called shield shapes. Glintstone is like a conduit for magic in the game. It's like a vessel. Okay. And the origins of Glintstone, as far as the game is concerned, are actually not explicitly explained. It's actually kind of mysterious. Basically, there are a couple of items that sort of piece together individually where Glintstone comes from. And there was basically this guy. He had this vision, and he saw the end of like a bright star. And there are a couple of items whose descriptions sort of back up that idea that Glintstone is like remnants of this star whose fragments fell to Earth. That's why I gave a variety of stones to the astrologer box, because there are a variety of different kinds of stars that may have fallen to the lands between. So rubelite is a type of tourmaline, mm -hmm. which is a really complicated material. They often call it the trash can of minerals. It's often formed in late stages of different geologic activity, and so you just have a really complex combination of all sorts of things. I immediately knew that it was tourmaline for a few reasons. One is the color, one is the vertical striations on the specimen. It's not the most durable, but it could protect you in an attack. And um, it, it might hurt if you flung it. Oh, 
from a staff maybe? So fun fact, it's actually piezoelectric, so you can create a positive and a negative end to it. You can create a charge, kind of like a battery. Yeah, I forgot um, about that. So if there are any electrical spells or elements to a glintstone, that might be applicable. Okay, what about rhodochrosite? So rhodochrosite can have a variety of appearances. One that you'll often see is called <laughs> bacon. Uh, and so it has this typical like white and pink and red banding with kind of like serrated edges and so it's kind mm -hmm. of like a, a rough kind of banding and it looks like bacon. Looks like and, uncooked bacon. Yeah, bacon and For bacon For all fat. the world like uncooked yeah. bacon. <laughs> but you can also have these really gemmy specimens that don't have any of the banding and they're a little bit more prized than than the banded ones. They tend to be a little bit rarer which is why I included it in here in its gemmier form because it's very rare to find sorcerers in the game of Elden Ring that use the red magic. So, this is pretty good vibes, I think. Love it. Bad vibes. Yikes. Bad vibes ahead. Lot of bad vibes in Elden Ring, unfortunately. Ah, box of destined death. Yeah, we so, are all destined to so death. At so the, at the beginning of the game, you fire up the game and it gives you this cutscene that gives you a little bit of backstory about an event called the Shattering, where the Elden Ring is broken into a bunch of pieces and a bunch of demigods each take a piece and basically go mad. And each piece of the Elden Ring that is picked up acts as a rune and one of the rings is the rune of death. Oh, okay, I see some obsidian. Death looks good. Death looks good. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this synthetic ruby. Sure, so I picked that because the rune of death, it's picked by one of the head honchos of the game, Queen Merica, and she takes the rune of death and gives it to her right-hand man, her servant, to protect, and he basically implants it in the back of his Hand. And when it's there, it takes the form of a ruby that looks a lot like that. But when it's not, it actually takes the form of a black sword. So part of my reasoning for taking a synthetic ruby instead of a natural one is that the rune is like fabricated. It's not yeah. naturally occurring, right? So there was a little bit of thought behind that. This is Vernoy Flame Fusion. And I can tell because luckily with a piece this large, you can actually see the curved growth striations. That and then you can see really clear dichroism. So two colors in rubies from looking at it through the crown or the pavilion. You can pretty clearly see the purple and the red. Oh yeah, look at that, in two sections. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so those are two easy identifiers, but yeah, essentially there's a powdered aluminum oxide with chromium, which is the coloring agent that gets heated up and then deposited on a bull and that rotates on a pedestal and then it builds this, this bull of synthetic corundum or synthetic ruby. And so that's why you have the curved growth striations. So talk to me about the cherawite and obsidian. We, if I must. So I, I sort of had to sort of hold my nose while I was picking these guys out. So these two specimens reminded me of these ghastly characters called the Godskin Apostles. They're sort of smaller enemies. They're like if Tim Burton designed the Michelin Man is kind of how they look, you know? So the cherawite, some of these guys have a hood over their face and the hood has a face on it, which is gross. But they have what looks to me like a Cherowite in the hood itself, like embedded. Hmm. So as yucky as those guys look, you know, I'm, I'm like fighting for my life out here. And I'm like, oh, that guy, that's a cool stone that he's got in his forehead in his little hoodie. So anyways, that's what that is. Now the obsidian, this reminded me of the God Slayer's seal, which is said to represent manipulation of the black flame. Yet another cool variety of magic in the game. As you guys know on this channel, we always pick a gem or two for a closer oh, yeah. look. Um, I gotta say, the Afghanite is, is you like my the favorite Afghanite? here. The I've... glintstone is intriguing to me, and then the, the bright blue color, the crystal formation, I love. Let's take a closer look.
Arise, Tarnished. Thanks for uh, <laughs> watching. Thank you for putting up with my little Show TED talk time. here today. Yeah, <laughs> all about the gemological inspiration I found in my playthrough of Elden Ring. No problem. And like I said earlier, I hope this inspires you guys to see the gemstones all around you, whether you're a gamer, you like movies, different sports have, you know. Fantasy in all mediums. All yeah. sorts of um, gemstone applications all around you. So I hope this opens up your eyes a little bit more. The more we discuss, the more knowledge we get. Knowledge is power, and you need all the power you can in Elden Ring. So leave us your theories about gemstones or really whatever about the game down in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.